On this channel, we've talked a lot about pitch design, diving deep into the different cameras and types of technology that have taken this sport by storm. But investing in the top of the line technology really takes a toll on your budget, especially if you're not at a big D1 school or within a professional organization. So today's video is going to talk about how you can get those same results for a fraction of the cost. In other words, how you can do pitch design on a budget. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. If this is your first time visiting the channel, you may be new to pitch design. Well luckily for you, I've done a few videos on that subject in the past. I'll link the pitch design playlist I've made in the description down below. But because we've talked about it so much, we're not going to cover the nitty gritty of what pitch design is in today's video. The basic idea of pitch design is examining how altering the way that you release the ball, whether that's a grip, your pressure points, or your wrist angle, affects how each pitch moves. To examine that information, we typically use expensive technology such as the Edgertronic slow motion camera or a Rapsodo. Together, those pieces of tech can cost you over $10,000 for the base units. That doesn't work for everybody. But what if I told you you could get similar work in for just a few hundred bucks? Let's talk about that. When I think of budget pitch design, I think of two very specific products in general. I talked about a whole list of pitch design cameras in my last video, so if you're interested in seeing more of an in-depth breakdown in specifically the pitch design camera role, I'll leave a link down in the description below. The top two products, which I both personally own, for a budget pitch design setup is going to start out with the Diamond Kinetics Pitch Tracker. You can purchase this ball for the small price of $99, and it gives you a lot of the same readings that you would get off of a Rapsodo or Trackman. And the thing actually works. You can see it verified by Driveline in this blog. Link in the description. For the price of one Rapsodo, you could purchase 45 of these balls. So if you're balling on a budget, this purchase is a no-brainer to start seeing metrics on your athletes. But no good pitch design setup is complete without a camera. For me, your best option on a budget is going to be either the Sony RX10 or RX100. If you're willing to buy an older model of this camera or a used version of it, you can find it online for as low as $200 right now. I've seen them pretty regularly priced between $200 and $400. Compared to Edgertronic, you could buy nearly 20 of these things, and their specs are definitely good enough to be used for pitch design purposes. More on that in a minute. Now, we just breezed pretty quickly through a very important subject, but let me reiterate. I told you earlier that the top of the line pitch design equipment used in today's game typically runs your team over $10,000, but for the low price of around $300, you could pair together a device to collect data on pitches, as well as a high quality high speed camera to analyze those pitches? There has to be a catch, right? Well, let's compare the high end versus the budget options to find out. Starting with our cameras, the Edgertronic versus the Sony RX family. The Edgertronic camera's base price is around $6,500 with the higher end models going for over $15,000. Compared to the used Sonys I've seen online at the time of making this video, you can tier one of these cameras for under $300, or a new one for $1,600. So obviously, the win in this category goes to the Sony cams. But for what you save in price, you're going to have to sacrifice in specs. And that is definitely the case here. The max frames per second on the edger is going to cap out at $22,500. That means that in one second, this camera has the ability to take 22,000 pictures to piece together into some incredibly high quality footage. That is an absolute insane number. It can also shoot an HD up to nearly 900 FPS. Comparing our Sony camera, our max FPS is going to be 1000. It's not going to be in perfect HD quality either. With this camera, can you see what we're looking for? Well, of course, but it isn't going to be as crisp as the Edger footage. So this round goes to the Edgertronic camera. Lastly, let's take a look at some other things to remember for each camera. Edgertronic was made to be easy to use, so you get a nice dashboard that you can access from your mobile device, whether that's a tablet, phone, or computer. The Sony cameras aren't going to have that. And outside of the little screen on the back of the camera, the live review is going to be incredibly difficult on this device. So when we talk about specs and added bonuses, the Edger is going to win every time. But if you're paying this much for a camera, you'd sure hope it does. Here's a clip from the Edger compared to a clip from the Sony. As you can tell, both definitely give you a high quality video on the back end. Next, let's talk about Rapsodo versus Diamond Kinetics. The cost of a new Rapsodo starts at $4,000, and the price of a new Diamond Kinetics ball, just like we said in the beginning, is just about $100. The obvious price gap gives our DK ball an early lead. 
When we talk about the metrics that each device can read, Rapsodo is going to give you a few more in gyro degree and horizontal and vertical brake chart that DK doesn't provide. But all the rest of the information you'll get here is going to be the exact same. However, due to the extra metrics, we will score one point for the Rapsodo here. As far as setup goes, Rapsodo requires you to measure out the distance from home plate each time and for you to calibrate the camera to make sure it's capturing the right information. Once you've used these puppies enough, you'll learn how to cut some corners here, but I thought I'd include this because of how easy it is to set up the DK ball. All you have to do is pick the thing up, flip it up in the air, and it'll connect via Bluetooth to your phone or tablet. That's pretty freaking cool. In terms of other info I can add, Rapsodo definitely has an edge on the type of data you can review afterwards with their cloud storage as well as a more in-depth display during tagging, which is good for nerds like me. But you'll have to pay some extra fees to get access to all of that stuff. As for DK, I love that you can use this device from your phone. It makes it a much more viable option for some people rather than having to invest in a new tablet to use Repsoto. For a budget video, we will definitely give DK the edge here. For reference, here's the information you can see when looking at each of the Repsoto dashboard and the DK dashboard during a session. Finally, what are my main takeaways from this video? Everyone watching this video is interested in learning more about how to make our players, or maybe even yourself, a little bit better. Pitch design is a great way to gain an edge, but the cost to get in appears to be super high if you're not at a higher level with a bigger budget. This video was put together to show you that for the price of a few hundred dollars, you can have nearly the same information that teams are spending tens of thousands of dollars on at higher levels. Pitch design helps players get better, which helps teams win more and athletes to move on to higher levels. If you've been holding out investing into some of this technology because it's simply too expensive, you don't have an excuse anymore. So check out DK or Sony cameras by clicking on the links in the description. Till next time. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you wanna keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.